Umetokoa na kutuisha Umetuganga na kutulisha Wati miliza mambo yetu Bwana Watu sambe Watu oko watu Zako bwana ni zamilele matendo yako kwetu ni maku fadili zako bwana ni zamilele matendo yako kwetu ni maku ina yako tu ni Angalia tulipotoka tulipotoka oh. ni mbali umetuzingira pande zote kono wako umetutoa mahali si salama wewe ndiwe Mungu kwa maisha yangu inaema yako tu ikusudi lako haleluya Praise God, church. Amen. We want to take the opportunity to welcome you all in this house of the Lord as we worship together and as we praise our Lord. And afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Praise and worship. Let's continue. We are going to praise God with some songs. We have come to give back to you. We have come to say thank you, Lord.
don't know how I did it. I made it through, and I can't tell how I did it. But one thing I know, Jehovah took it so worship team. We thank God for you. May the Lord continue to bless you as we serve the Lord. Uh, we are proceeding well. And I request that you turn to the pastor next to you. Just look at her or him. Najua Mujuan, isn't you? Tell him or her, very soon I will see you a full face. One has to and the Lord is still in his throne. Uh, we want to welcome the choir to present a number for us. Choir. Thank you very much, our choir. Youth. Kaidre Youth, if you are there, come and present to us on a youth. Thank you very much. Do you have anyone among us who have a testimony? We have a lot of fear. They know the Lord is still doing miracles within ourselves. He is still hearing. The kingdom of God is still in operation. Do you have anyone with a burning testimony? A testimony can encourage to assemble to Namjua Mungu. And we know he has done a lot of things to us. And we have a lot of fear because of many things surrounding us. But we know for those who love the Lord, He is still doing miracles to us. This was a chance for one minute for anyone who feels he or she can testify of the goodness of the Lord. Despite the challenges that we are having, despite many things that are surrounding us, that have never been seen or experienced in the past. Bonas, if you will, come Akuna, it's time for announcement.
Hallelujah. Yeah, we are preaching Jesus in and out of season. Then the day week starts tomorrow. The launch is happening now at CAC TV. By the way, if you don't know that the Presbyterian Church, we have a channel. We have a CAC TV in Signet, so you can also follow the proceeding throughout the week, and you'll be very much updated. Uh, it starts tomorrow, and we are inviting all of you to be together with us uh, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow here on church. Uh, we shall gather, we pray, and share the word. I just want to give you how the program will be. And then on Tuesday, uh, we shall have some visits here and there. So the members of the evangelism are aware. And also on Wednesday, we shall have a Bible study. We are encouraging each and every member at your home to have a Bible study with your children, with your husband, with your wife, you know, with your household. Na tukikuja hapa sande tunaiza uliza kama mulikuwa na yo. Sirinajua ya mtakuwa na yo. Hello? Yeah, that's how it will be. Uh, and we are basing our theme in the book of John 21, 15, 19. And it says, consider your ways and follow me. Not Lawrence, and follow God. Hallelujah. And follow God. Because he is the way and uh, he is the true God. On Thursday, uh, we are encouraged to support any needy child. So wherever you are, maybe at your workplace, you know, wherever you work, if you are in school, you meet uh, that needy child or a children's home. We encourage you to go and visit and uh, do something for them. And that one will make you uh, to have a blessing from the Lord. And as you do so, we know that the name of the Lord will be glorified. Now let's go to Friday. On Friday, we shall have open air, closed, pala India church. So, marisia kazi zaka uko halaka, wale wanatoka job, watoke mapema, saa kumi tukue pale, tuhubili jiri, na bwana tutubaliki. On Saturday, kwa sababu indakuwa weekend kubwa, we shall have a door-to-door evangelism. Door-to-door ni kutoka hapa, tunaenda uku, tunaenda uku, tunaenda uku, tunahubili jina la yesu. And we are encouraging members to be here in church. Wale wabawa watakuja, diyo tutaeda na wao. So you are much welcome. Na sisi tukikuja kwa wako, watafadhali, utufugulie. We shall observe the, uh, the protocols of the Ministry of Health. So we shall keep distance, we shall sanitize, and we shall preach Jesus. Baneso Asifiwe. Yeah, that's how the Saturday will be. And then in the evening, then we have the open air pale. We continue from uh, Tutaanzi at uh, 4 p.m. up to around 7 p.m. So you are much welcome. And also on Sunday now, after the church service, during the evening time, the crusade continues. We have very uh, uh, anointed men of God and women of God who will come to minister together with us. In addition to that, as a church, we have been uh, uh, serving because we don't have a dais. A dais nile nile stage. Kama hapa tunaweza sema hapa koju. Yo tukipreachi jiri pale nje, tusikue mahali tunawatuonekani kwa shimo. So we have a project we need to have our own dais. We have been hiring for many years since the, uh, the parish was formed. But this is the time that we have to come up with our own. So we are requesting members. Tafadhali, on Sunday, kuja na kitu kidogo. Kuja na kitu mingi. Najua na ezasema kidogo mkuja na kidogo. Tunataka kitu mingi. Dio hili tuweze uh, kumaliza your project to go in our own dias. So when we need to go for a revival, we don't need to hire them. If we went to go at Mweki, at Kasalani, we will call it our own. So, priest members, on Sunday, tutasimama hapa, tutawaitisha, dio hili tuweza kununua yo, dio hili tuweza kuhubili jidi. Wanaesu wa sifiwe, tutakuwa pamoja. May God bless you. May God do you good. Thank you. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, thank you. It's uh, a possibility to take note of all those items so that we may play and where we are supposed to take part, we take part and the Lord will continue to bless us. We will now go to we'll take our offerings and after our offerings we are going to support Jim uh, uh, in his pre-wedding. Uh, therefore, be prepared to do so. Elder Nance, Elder Esther, Tavadari.
praise God church. Bwana asifiwe. Ni wakati wa kuabudu Bwana na sadaka na saka setu. Tutasimama kama tumetayarisha ile kitu tunakuja kumtolea Bwana na ili tuweze kutoa. Tafadhali tusimame. Tusimame tujitoe sisi wenyewe alafu tutoe mali yetu. Na tuombe Baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunakuja mbele zako asubuhi ya leo. Tunanyenyekea sana miguni pako tukisema ya kwamba wewe ni Mungu wetu. Asante ni kwa sababu umetuhifadhi na umetupatia siku ingine jema. Tuje mahali hapa patakatifu pako Mungu wetu. Tuliinue na hata tulihimidi jina lako tuseme ya kwamba wastahili. Tukushukuru ni kwa sababu ya ubali ambao umetuleta. Kutoka wakati tulianza ibada hii na mpaka wakati huu Mungu wetu umeendelea kuona roho wako mtakatifu akitamalaki. Na diyo mana tuwa kushukuru na hata kuriinua jina lako. Wakati huu mungu wetu pia tuwa jitoa sisi wenyewe kama kafara ilio kubalika bere ya uso wako. Utukubali mungu wetu na tunapo eda kutoa saka setu na sadaka setu mungu wetu. Ukaweza kusikubali. Tunajua ya kwamba sisi wenyewe tukijitoa ili mungu wetu tukuhudumie. Mana unatuhitaji baba wabiguni sisi tukuhudumie. Mahali ya bapo tuko inji ya kanisa hiri. Mahali ya bapo tunafanya kasi. Unahitaji huduma kutoka kwetu mungu wetu tujitoe tukubalike bere ya uso wako na ili mungu wetu na hapa kwenda inje tukue watu wa kufanya watu wengi wa kutabue na wakujue maana tutateda kadi na mapensi yako tunapo jitoa mungu wetu utukubali na ili uwese kututumia pia mungu wetu tumekuja na mali ya bao umetubaliki na yo. tumekuja na saka baba wabiguni wikubali na ili katika nyumba yako kila wakati kue na kitu wabao mtu anawesa igia na kupata Baba wabiguni umesema ya kwamba tujitoe na ili shakura ipatikane katika nyumba yako takatifu. Tua ileta bere sako baba wabiguni ukaikubali. Pia mungu wetu tumekuja na sadaka mungu wetu ya kuteketeswa. Na ili baba wabiguni roho wako mtakatifu waedelee kutamaraki dani ya mioyo yetu. Ili utuerekese katika hali na katika kira jabu. Tumekuja na sadaka ya shukurani kukushukuru ni kwa sababu ya vile umetulida na kutuhifadhi. Umekua mungu katika maisha yetu na katika kira jabu. Mungu wetu kaikubali na baba wabiguni wedelee kutubariki. Pia tumekuja mungu wetu na fast fruit baba wabiguni. Tuaikabithi mkononi mwako hili wedelee kutamaraki katika kasini mwetu. Yote baba wabiguni tunapo itoa na kujitoa sisi wenyewe. Ikubali na hili mungu wetu ikaweza kutekeresa kasi yako. Mahali ya papo hatuwezi. Edelea kutulida na kutuhifadhi. Edelea kutukubali na kukubali mali yetu. Mana hivyo mungu wetu divyo tunavyo omba. Hii tumeomba ikiwa obi ya imani katika jina la Yesu Kristo alia muamba wa wakovu wetu. It's a time now to get our two Bible texts. Kaidre, those who are reading, can you lead us to where we are? Praise God. Praise God again. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1 to 11. Acts, chapter 1, verse 1 to 11. Praise God, church. Our second reading comes from the book of uh, Galatians, chapter 5, verse uh, 13 to 26. And it says, Jane and Faith for reading uh, to us very well. Now let us all stand up as we welcome the choir to give us a number as we prepare our hearts to hear the word. Pedre, let us all stand up. Choir, lead us with a song. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. to you I give This recorded in his word it is only that you look and live. Look and live, my brother, live, look and live. Look to Jesus now and live. It is recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. I have a message full of love. 
worship the Lord. Just be happy in the house of God. We have a message from the Lord. It's the message of eternal life. It is only that you look and live. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the cross was lifted up and Moses was given instructions by the Lord and he was told to lift up this, uh, the, the bronze serpent in the wilderness so that when the bronze serpent was lifted up, all the children of Israel needed to do was to look at that bronze serpent and if they had been bitten by the serpents that were on the ground, they looked at that serpent and they lived. Hallelujah. So if you have been bitten by sin, if you have been bitten by trouble, if you have been bitten by anything, look and live. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we willing to look to the cross? Amen. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your love that is forever and ever, O oh God. Many of us, sometimes in different circumstances, feel unloved. We feel left alone. We are afraid, O oh God. And especially this season, O oh God, we really are afraid. We confess that, Lord, we are afraid. We are afraid of COVID-19 and we are afraid of getting sick. We are afraid that we might die. We are afraid, O oh God. Father, we are afraid of our economy because we don't have enough money in our pockets. Our businesses are not functioning. We are not certain about our jobs tomorrow. In fact, we can look to you because if we look to you, we will live. That, Lord, is your word. It is your promise to us that if we look to you, O oh God, the Father of life, we will live. We desire this morning that, Lord, as we hear your word, let it give us life. And let us live this life on earth to your glory. And, Father, let it also give us an opportunity to live with you in heaven forever. So we surrender to you. We ask of your presence among us. Come and abide and glorify yourself in us. We give thanks and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our seats in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Buana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. So let's, let's, let's be alive. Let's, let's trust God that if we look to him, we will live. And so let's start living by faith because the Lord is here with us. My name is Augustine Gito Kawanyaga. Christ is Lord and my Savior, and I'm excited because of what he has done for me. It is not because of what I have done. One of the things that I have been remembering, many times we come and we give a testimony, and we say, I am saved. De mohonoku. And so when we say, I am saved, it feels like it is something I have done. There is something I have done. I am saved. So there is something I have done. That's, that's how it feels. But the truth of the matter is, I have done nothing to save myself. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So even if I claim that I am saved, I actually, I am saying, I am saved by Jesus. He is the one who has saved me. Praise the name of the Lord. I have no qualities of my own to save me. I have no education that I have learned somewhere that could save me. I don't have any wealth that could have saved me. But I am saved because Christ has saved me. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I'm excited about what Christ has done, not what I have done. I am excited about what Christ has done for me to be here. And I am thankful to God for what he has done for you to be able to come and gather in this place. I quickly just want to mention two things this morning. One is what I call basic Christianity. Basic Christianity. 
just basic. Because I realize, and maybe you have realized with me, that we are struggling with our faith. We find ourselves struggling with our faith. We find ourselves struggling with believing God. Especially when life happens. We really struggle with God. We struggle to believe him. We struggle to still wait and know that he is still good. That he still loves us. That he still cares for us. And so the one thing we need to revisit in our lives is just basic faith. Because one of the things that has happened in our society, especially again as we are saying this season, on one hand we are saying we are almost glorifying COVID-19 to a higher level. We, we today talk more about COVID-19 than we talk about Jesus. That is true. People will mention that word so many times than we mention the name of Jesus. Yet the Bible has given us the word of God. The Bible in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verses 10, I believe, it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Praise the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord it is a strong tower. The Bible says in the book of Philippians that the name Jesus is the only name given to man by which we are saved. The name Jesus. And one thing when we again talk about being saved, it is important for us to understand what it means to be saved. It is true that God saves from sin. But we also struggle with sin. And some of us, when sin happens in our life, we feel like we are actually not born again. Like we really do not know Jesus. And so many of us tend to fall back. Because we are still struggling with sin. And sometimes we wonder, if Jesus had really saved me, why do I still struggle? But the word of God assures us that he is our salvation. So indeed, he is able to save us from sin and the power of sin that kills us. And that name is also able to save us from trouble. It is, save us from, it is able to save us from sickness and disease. And sometimes when we are sick or we have sick relatives in our lives, we stand there and wonder, really, I thought Jesus was supposed to save us. But today, quickly, let's think about basic Christianity. What does it mean to be a Christian? I have said this here before I believe. What does it really mean to be a Christian? And I have said, number one, a Christian is a person who is born again. It is, good to, it is always good to remember these seven key pillars of our faith so that we can build our faith on them. That number one, if you are a Christian, you should be born again. Because that is what Jesus told Nicodemus. That if you want to have everlasting life, you must be born again. Born again by faith, by the Spirit of God, and by water. That is what Jesus said. And so when you come to church and you are baptized, before we baptize you in this place, or before you present your child for baptism, the question that the minister always asks, and I always tell people, when you come to church during a wedding, please listen to the vows. Watu wengi hawasikizi vile kuna semua, wawa na wangali anguo na ile magari imekuja. They don't pay attention to the vows. So every time you come to church, kindly listen to the vows. So when we come for communion, when we come for baptism, the first question that the minister asks do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? That's a very specific question that is asked of everybody. And so every one of us in this sanctuary this morning, if you claim 
to have been baptized. If you believe you are baptized, then you must confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. There are no two ways to it. If you come for baptism, you come as a second step because you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Because you must be born again by the Spirit of God and by water. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. And number two, we have said you must be a person of prayer. A Christian walks by prayer. I know when we struggle with life, sometimes prayer becomes difficult. And in this season, there are many people struggling with prayer. Because number one, we come to pray. And let me say this. We have a problem. We have a language problem. A language problem. What is prayer? You know, we have a language problem because there is an English word called prayer. There is another English word called ask. A-S-K. Ask or asking. There is maybe another English word called request. Requesting. There is an English word called borrow. Borrowing. You borrow. Now, in my vernacular and maybe even in Kiswahili, to borrow, ni kufanya nini? Ni? Ni kuomba? Eh, na wale wa Swahili wazuri watasema ni kuazima ama kitu kama hicho. But sisi wa Swahili wa Kiswahili ya juu ni kuomba. Si ndio? Wacha tukae na hiyo kuomba, si ndio? Tuko pamoja? Eh, ni kuomba. So if you borrow, umeomba. What is to request? What is to request? Ni kuomba. Eh, kwa Kiswahili hiki chetu sisi Ile sisi tutaelewa. Ikuomba. What is to ask? What is to ask? Oh, kuna mswahili mzuli hapa. Anasema ni kuitisha. We? Okay. <laughs> eh. To ask. Ni kuitisha. Lakini kwa kiswahili chetu, cha kawaida. Oh, ni kuuliza. Oh, I'm not talking about asking a question. There is asking a question. But when you ask somebody to give you a book or to... Oh, ni kuazima. Very good. Uh, now, a few of us here are kikuyus. What is to pray? Kohoya. What is to ask? Ne kohoya. Oria. Okay. What is to borrow? Kohoya. What is to request? Ati nini nini? No. The Bible tells us about prayer. And for some reason, the interpretation of the word prayer is kuomba. Isn't it? Kuhoya. So we were made to understand that prayer is kuhoya. To ask, to, to be given. To request things. That is what we call prayer. And so we go to God in prayer. And we ask him for things. We ask him to do things for us. Because we believe that what prayer is. But you see, God does his will. So some of the things we ask, we don't get for very many reasons. And James talks about some of those reasons. But some of the things we ask are probably not in line with the will of God. So he does not give us. And so when God has not 
given us what we asked for, we get very angry. We get very offended with God. And many times we walk away from him. Because we think he doesn't love us enough. Because if he had loved us enough, he would have given us what we asked. Because prayer is asking. But that is not true. Prayer is not asking. Hallelujah. I am still trying to work through my vocabularies to, to come up with the correct word for prayer. Because prayer is not asking. Hallelujah. Because prayer, according to Jesus, is a relationship. Prayer is a relationship with God. It is a walk with God. It is a fellowship with God. And so what we need as believers who are born again, as I said, are people who have fellowship with God. People who have fellowship with God. So that they know what God is doing. You see, Abraham had fellowship with God. He walked with God. God communicated with him. He told him what he intends to do. When he wanted him to leave Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan and dwell there, he talked to him and told him, I want you to leave your parents and your place and go to Canaan. And he went to Canaan with God because he had heard God. In Canaan, it was a dry wilderness. And he had very many different challenges. But he had had God who had told him to go to Canaan with him. So he was confident that even though Canaan was a dry land, was a land where he had enemies, was a land where he did not have relatives and friends, he would still survive. Because it is God who had told him to go there. And he knew he would go with him into that place. Praise the name of the Lord. And when he went there for many years and he did not have a child of his own, he walked with God until God spoke to him and told him he would have a child. And, you know, Abraham patiently trusted and waited. He had a relationship. He had a walk with God. And for me, that is what prayer is. It is a relationship with God so that you understand what God is doing in your life. And so that you understand what God is doing in your community and in your society. So that whatever happens, you know you are walking with God. Praise the name of the Lord. So that when good things happen, you know the Lord is with you in the good things. But you also understand that when things that we call good do not happen, because there are things we call good, but you understand that when things happen that we don't call good, God is still good. Praise the name of the Lord. And that he is still walking with us. And that he still loves us even when those things we call good are not happening. Because if we can understand that, we can patiently wait on God even when it is not working. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is what we will say. That it is true there is COVID-19. And it is taking some of us, it has taken people we know and love. But we know that God is still good in the midst of COVID-19. And every other day we are being told a new version of COVID-19 is coming. But we will say like Daniel. One of the things we will not do, we will not bow down to COVID-19. Praise the name of the Lord. And one of the things we will do, we will continue to come to church. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of COVID-19, we will gather in the presence of God because God has invited us. And we will trust God to protect us when we come into church to worship Him. Hallelujah. But we will also say, if God is not interested in protecting us from COVID-19, we will still come. Hallelujah. Because if we live, we will, our life is Christ. Hallelujah. But if we die, 
we will go to heaven and be with him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This will be our testimony. Like the four guys of the book of Daniel. They said, listen here, Nebuchadnezzar. We have heard your instructions. And we can see that is fire. But please hear. It is okay. We trust that God will protect us from fire. But if he doesn't care to protect us from the fire, it is okay. Let us go into the fire. Because we know in that fire, we might find him. Hallelujah. So I encourage all of us. I am talking about basic Christianity. That we must be people who walk with God. Who have fellowship with God. In good and in bad times. Because he does not change. He still loves us. Even when we have sickness and disease, Jesus loves us. And if we can walk by faith, God gives us strength to bear trouble. He gives us strength to withstand these challenges. And he gives us victory. Because he sees our faithfulness. Praise the name of the Lord. Buana asifiwe. You know, God sees our faithfulness when we are faithful. God looked at Daniel and Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego. And he was like, these boys are crazy. But because they are crazy, I'll not disappoint them. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know what kind of things you trust God for. I don't know whether you trust God for simple things and then you try to fix the difficult things because that's again something that we love doing. You know, believing God for what we think he can do and then trying to fix what we think we should fix. Prayer. Christians must be people of prayer who walk in fellowship with God. And number three, we must be people of the word. We must read the word of God. I know that many times we feel lazy. Many times we feel like we don't have enough time for it. But I encourage us, kindly read the word of God. Have a routine. Have a style. Have a way. Don't just open the Bible from whichever page that opens and you read. I encourage people, if you want to read the word of God, pick a book at a time. You can pick any, but pick a book at a time. Read. Have a notebook. Have a notebook, by the way. If you're a good Christian, have a notebook. Read your Bible, chapter by chapter, of a book. And don't be in a hurry. Some of us try to finish it. Now, hata ukimaliza na hujaelewa vile inasema, haija kufanyia kazi vizuri. Because there are so many benefits of the word of God. The word of God purifies us. And I know one of the things that we struggle with, as we read in the book of Galatians, is impurity. The Bible talks about impurity. So what is it that purifies us? What is it that cleans our systems? It is the word of God. When we read and hear what God is saying, there is a way it cleans our systems. There is a way it cleans our minds. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 1, that blessed is the man who meditates on the word of God day and night. There is a way that meditating on the word of God day and night purifies the way you think. You are witnesses that the society in which we are living in, people are angry. People are really angry. Husbands and wives, every single day, there is a murder, there is a crime. There is a family that is in misery. People are leaving one another every day. Husbands and wives who can't stay together in the same house. By the way, if you are struggling with your marriage, before you talk to a counselor, which is a good thing, kindly read the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And it doesn't matter how destroyed you think that relationship is. Kindly refer it to the word. And let the word of God work through your systems. You will start seeing your spouse differently. Just by working with the word of God. The reason there is so many problems in our society today is because we have forsaken the word 
Brethren, let's love this word. Let's read it. Let's believe what it says. Let it work in our lives. The word of God, the Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16, that it is useful for correction, for instruction. It is the word that gives us wisdom. So if you are struggling with decision making, there are decisions you need to make in life. If you are looking for a husband and you don't know who to marry, read the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't know what to do about your business, read the word of God because it makes us wise. Hallelujah. The Bible says it makes us wise unto salvation. So it is the word that makes us wise and saves us. Saves us from sin and saves us from trouble. So if you have any trouble anywhere, check in the word. You will find your way out. Hallelujah. So reading the word of God is not a Christian thing to do. You know sometimes we do things. We pray so that people can see we are prayerful. We read the word so that, you know, we can tell people that, you know, I read the Bible. Some of us are even born again because in our families and the people I work with, if you say you are not born again and, you know, you will look like you are the odd one out. We do so many Christian things that don't work on our lives. But Christ has called us to transform us so that he can change us. Moving on quickly, one very important thing that actually COVID-19 has destroyed is fellowship. People are okay. Kuingia muisako wajaze, waende Nairobi, washide kwa street, wakipitana, kila siku, wakifanya biyashara. They are okay in the marketplace. They are okay in every other place. But tell people to come to church. They will ask you whether there is enough social distance in church. Tell people to come for the Thursday fellowship on Thursday evening. They will ask you whether muna sanitize sawa sawa. Lakini kwa soko, githurai, sijapatana na mtu wakisema, hey, excuse me, we can't social distance. Meshikana sana huku kwa soko. Fellowship. It is God's intention and God's purpose that believers meet together. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 that they used to meet together every day for the breaking of bread, for prayer, and for supporting one another. There are many people who are going through difficult things. Ukika peke yako kwa nyumba, maisha inakumiza. But when you come out and interact with people, pray together, share, tell them what you're going through. Listen to other people who are probably going through more difficult things than you actually thought you are going through. And you will realize, God is still good. I'm still here. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm still provided. I'm still blessed. God is good. I encourage us, brethren, we must return to fellowship. COVID-19, no COVID-19. Hallelujah. Because God will protect us. And if he is not feeling good enough to protect us, we are ready to die and be with him in heaven. Hallelujah. Because even if we avoid COVID-19, Zahi, kuna watu, wameaguka na gari, wakafa. Wengine, wamepata mambo mengine, wamekufa. So we, the Bible says we carry death with ourselves wherever we go. So we still carry it. We are not exposing ourselves and I appeal to all of us. By the way, uh, the vaccine that is going on is not 666, so please feel free to go and take an injection. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, kindly feel very free to go out and take the COVID-19 vaccine and uh, so that at least if, if COVID-19 comes your way, it doesn't really put you down. That, that's the idea and you will be okay. But the Lord will protect us. And we must proclaim the name of the Lord over and above every other name. Because it's the name given to us by which we are saved. So we must return to fellowship and come back to church to worship together. And as believers, we must be witnesses. We read in the book of Acts that Jesus promised the disciples to be filled with the Spirit of God to be his witnesses. I do not know in your life how many people you witness to 
about the love of God, about the power of God. And I always say there are two ways of witnessing. There is the word of mouth, but there is also the life that you live. Because there are many of us who will proclaim out there that they are believers, but people know them differently. In fact, wakikuona kanisa wanashanga haya, hata huyu wanakujaga kanisa. Because the way they know you out there, your life is not a witness to the saving grace. Your life must be a witness that Jesus saves and transforms lives. So we must go out and witness. And we have been invited by evangelism this coming week through to Saturday. If you have never gone out for door to door, I encourage you, come out on Saturday here at 8 in the morning. Share the word, say a prayer together and go out. One of the things I discovered, if you want to be a strong believer, if you want to be a person who really testifies about God, you must tell somebody else about it. And you must encourage yourself to go out there. Meet people who oppose you. Meet people who question what you believe. And then you are able to actually explain to them what it is you believe. It makes your Christianity grow. It makes your faith grow. Even if you are young, by the way, Youth, kindly, come out on Saturday, early in the morning at 8. Let's meet here. Learn how to tell other people about the love of God. As you tell them, it transforms your own life. Hallelujah. And one of the things I actually tell people, if you go out there, kule kwa barabara, uambie watu waokoke, hata we utaanza kuhishi vizuri. Kwa sababu wakuna vile utaenda pale uambia watu wa okoke, rafu uanze kufanya vitu zingine vitu kwa fani fani. You will have to start living the way you are telling them. So if you are feeling like you are struggling with your own faith and the way you live your life, just go and tell a few people to be born again. And then you will start realizing, ile kitu niliambia wengine, lazima hata mimi nifanyi. Witnessing is a powerful way to make you a good Christian. As a believer, you must be willing and ready to bear temptations and trials. That is the calling of God. Have we trials and temptations? It is the will of God that we actually have trials and temptations. I believe it is the book of John chapter 16 and verses 31. After Jesus had talked to the disciples and encouraged them and promised them the Holy Spirit. And they were asking, what shall we get, you know, after we have served you and followed you? He told them, you will get so many rewards. You will have a hundred folds and sixty folds and thirty folds. And you will also have enough trouble on top of the blessings of God. So in our walk with God, there is a share there is a portion of problems. Hallelujah. By the way, even if you are not a Christian, this one you will not escape. There is still enough problems out there if you are not a Christian. So don't say that I will not become a Christian so that I avoid problems. Those who are not Christians probably have more and they don't know where to take them. So at least you know where to take yours. There is enough trouble for all of us and it is in the will of God as I said at the beginning Abraham had enough of them but he knew his God and he walked with him have you trials and temptations you know that you have Christ and there are trials trials are when you are sick in your body things are testing you the things that test your faith you have people who oppose you you have issues that you are dealing with those are trials magerio magerio but they are temptations. Temptations, after you have faced magerio, and you don't have money in your pocket, then you are tempted. Because somebody else has money, and you are tempted to be jealous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Or somebody else drops money. And instead of you thinking, I need to tell him he has dropped, you are thinking that God has answered your prayer. You are being tempted. You are being tempted. And temptations are many. You are a young man. You have decided to walk with the Lord. And then this beautiful cheek just crosses your path. And you are thinking, my God. 
This is not the kind of girls that just pass by and you don't say hi. You're being tempted. So you need to understand that there will be temptations. So even if she comes, she is half dressed. I don't want to say half naked. She is half dressed. You will still let her pass. Hallelujah. Because you understand you are being tempted and you let her go your, her way and you will go yours because you have a calling to bear trials and temptations. As believers, we must be ready to bear trials and temptations. And Christ has promised to fill us with his spirit. Hallelujah. It is his word that he shall not leave us desolate and destitute and desperate. He has given us his word that he is willing to fill us with his spirit. As we go out to witness, that was the other idea that the Lord is speaking to us. That we must go out and bear witness after understanding our basic Christianity. Who we are as Christians and believers. We must go out and tell the world about the love of God. And seek to bring the world into the house of God. But the Lord has assured us that he will go with us. And he told the disciples, wait in Jerusalem until the power of the Holy Spirit has come and you will be my witnesses. Are you struggling with being a witness of Christ at home? Are you struggling with being a witness for Christ in your neighborhood? At your place of work? Because everybody else is corrupt, you are struggling with being a witness for Christ? Christ has assured us, wait, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in all the regions of the world. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know how many of us wish to be witnesses to the power of God. That power is available for us to heal us. That power is available to deliver us. That power is available to transform our lives, transform our relationships. Those things that we struggle with there is a power that is available that Christ has made available for each one of us. It is not for some. Many of us Christians have decided that good Christianity is for the people who are in leadership. Good Christianity is for elders and the minister and the pastors. The rest of us don't really need to be good Christians. Listen to the word of God. All of us have been called. Each one of us has a call to be a believer, to follow Christ and walk in his ways. He's tapped to his power so that he can make you a witness. It is not impossible. It is not difficult. The challenges we are going through, the spirit of God is available to make us wise. Wise unto salvation. Every single decision you have ever struggled with, there is an answer available in the word of God and by his spirit. Let us stand on our feet. I would like you to take a moment. I don't know your walk with God. But take a moment. The General Assembly has given us a theme for the 23rd General Assembly. It says, consider your ways. And that is the same theme that evangelism will be leading us with in the coming week. It is the area of Bible study we will be doing. Consider your ways. And so this morning, take a moment and consider what is happening in your life and whether Christ is involved anywhere in what's happening. Whatever it is you want to do with your life, whatever decisions you need to make, consider your ways and ask, is Christ involved? Is he leading me? Am I available to him? I allow you a moment to talk with the Lord. Just, just, just one minute because our time is long spent. Just speak with the Lord. Open your mouth and just talk to Jesus. Tell him where you are. Tell him what you are dealing with. 
Tell him about your fears and your worries. Tell him about what your confusions are. Give him thanks because he has done you well. Give thanks to Jesus for the things he has carried you through. The reason we are here is because God has really been with us. He has taken care of us. We have reasons to give thanks. So indeed, give thanks to the Lord for his goodness to us. Even as you speak to him and tell him about your life. Tell him about your struggles. Tell him about yourself and what you are looking forward to and what you would like him to do for you. The man that sat at the gate on the roadside when he heard the Messiah was passing, he called on to him and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. And this morning, you may be feeling like somebody standing on the roadside. Jim in your own way, in your own language and tell him, Son of David, have mercy on me. I am struggling with my marriage. I am struggling at my place of work. I am struggling with my business. I am struggling, Lord, with my children. I am struggling, Lord. Have mercy, Son of David. Have mercy on me. And equip me with your spirit this morning. We love you, Lord Jesus. And thank you because you are the one that has actually loved us with an everlasting love. When we did not know you, when we did not seek you, Jesus, you still loved us. You came and died on the cross for us so that we would be reconciled back to God. This morning in this where we are gathered in your name we confess our failures we confess our weaknesses we confess our lack of faith we confess our fear oh God we confess that on our own we are not able but you are God who saves your word says in Hebrews that you are able to save completely those who come to you, O oh God. And this morning we came to church. Some of us came because it is the custom. Nikawaida kuja. But God, we want to confess we are tired of playing church. Kawaida. We are tired of getting used to church. And we are praying that, Lord, church will be a place where we meet with you, O oh God. Let it be a place where our lives are transformed. Your word tells us of a man who had been used to sitting at the pool of healing for 38 years. And some of us, Lord, have been here in church for years, O oh God. And we just never feel your touch. We just never experience your goodness and grace. But this morning, our Father, if you stir your pool, O oh God, we desire to be healed. We desire to be restored. We desire to be transformed by your word. O oh, oh God of heaven, would you change the circumstances, O oh God? Would you change the situations of our lives? Change us, O oh God. Father, thank you. We thank you for your word. May it have a place in our lives to change us and to prepare us to be witnesses of your goodness, of your healing, of your provision, of your blessings, O oh God. Father, I pray that whatever need is presented in this sanctuary this morning, God of heaven, meet that need from your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray that Father, in accordance with your word, in one of us who is sick, Lord Jesus, you are able to heal us. Make us well. Let there be testimonies this morning of healing. Healing in this pool where we have gathered in your presence. Father, we pray about our relationships. Marriages that are breaking. Relationships that are hurting. God of heaven, we pray in Jesus' name. Heal these relationships, O oh God. 
heal us, our Father. We pray for our jobs and our businesses. God of heaven, in the midst of this lack, we pray for your provision. We pray that you open doors of heaven and bless the work of our hands, bless the work of our minds, and prosper us, O oh God. We again pray for this nation that it may know your peace, your presence, your power, and your joy. We trust you, O oh God. We desire to walk with you. And as we conclude this prayer, if you could be out there and you're saying, I do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, make your way very quickly. Acknowledge that you need Jesus to save you. And this morning he is available. We don't have much time. We will ask you, if you're out there, you may raise your hand from wherever you are and ask Christ to come into your heart. He's available. He's available. Christ is available for us. Raise that hand in the presence of God if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you wish for him to come into your life and save you and change you and transform your life. He's available tonight. He's available in this sanctuary. We see that hand in the presence of God and the Lord is available for you. There's a lady up there raising up her hand. Are you out there? You wish to say, Christ, I need you to come into my heart. I need you to come and save me. Change my situation. Are you out there? Make your way. Make your way. Make your way. Christ is available. Christ is available today to change your circumstance. I'll ask the lady up there to just quickly come down. We just say a short prayer and then we'll be out of this sanctuary. There's a lady right up. I don't know whether we have ushers in this house. And if you're there, as she makes her way, just speak to the Lord. The word tells us, consider your ways. So keep considering that way. As we conclude this prayer, we'll just take a very short moment to pray with this lady and then we'll be out of here. But the word says, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Jesus is in need of that transformation in the presence of God. Father, we thank you. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Lord, we thank you. We honor you, O God. You could be out there. You are thinking you need to consider your way. You need to ask Christ into your life. You may be young. You may be older. Whatever, wherever you are in this life. As we say a prayer, just, just lift up these dear ones into the presence of God, even as you lift yourself up. And the Lord, the Lord is available. The Lord is available. The Lord is available for these ladies as we pray with them. And as you also consider your own way. Because you must consider your own way. Let's, let's say a prayer in the presence of God. Just pray for these dear ones as the Lord ministers into their spirits. Lord, we thank you. We love you, Saint Nira and King. Hallowed be your name, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you, O King. There is none like you. I'll invite the elders to just come closer as we say this prayer, and then we'll be out of here. We love you, Jesus. We love you, King. Our Father and our God, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for these two ladies that have made their way forward because they desire that you change the circumstance of their lives. They desire that you save them and that you fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit. We join together with them, O oh God, in repentance and in turning away from sin and wickedness and praying that, Lord, would you have mercy upon all of us as you forgive us this morning. We pray that you write their names in the book of life. We pray that, Father, in accordance with your promise, 
fill them with your Holy Spirit so that they too can be witnesses at their homes, at their places of work, wherever they live, O oh God. Make them witnesses to the saving grace of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. We thank you and we praise you and we pray for others among us, O oh God, that need you in their lives. Would you visit with them and minister to them, O oh God. We praise you, we worship and adore you and we humbly pray believing and trusting in Jesus' name. We'll ask them to just tell us who their names are. And then... Hi. I'm Lynette Wambui Wandia. And I'm saved. My name is Josephia. My name is Mary Waitera and I'm born again. We thank God for Waitera and Wanjiro and pray that uh, the evangelism team will kindly just attend to them as they go. And uh, God bless you. We would have given you hugs and many other things, but we appreciate you. And we are not afraid of Corona. We are not afraid, but we are just being respectful of all of us. And it's good to be respectful. We appreciate you. Find your way. Uh, somebody there will take care of you. And God bless you. Let's appreciate them. Let us appreciate our God well, please. Let us start, please. Let us continue studying as we, we, we sing this song. Hallelujah to Mwambie Bwana Asante. 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 Oh hallelujah to Mwambie Bwana Asante. Oh hallelujah to Mwambie Bwana Asante. Let us pray to our God and our Father, we are before you again. We thank you, dear Father, for being with us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit being with us here, dear Lord. As we call upon your name as we're starting this service, Jehovah Father, we have seen your hand, we have seen you, you have seen your presence, oh dear Heavenly Father. And all that your word has come in a strong way, dear Heavenly Father, that we must consider our ways, oh dear Father. May you help us, dear Lord, to consider our ways. Now that you have come to the end of this service, dear Father, may you disperse us with your love, your care, your protection, and that your favor be upon each one of us in our activities this week. For this is our prayer of faith. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we pray. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.